This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. Get access to my streaming video service Nebula when you sign up for CuriosityStream using the link in the description. <laughs> Hello everyone, thank you for coming. Um, sorry I'm a little bit late. Um, we underestimated how long parking would take and then we got into a bit of an argument over whether the stairs or the lifts were done. You know what, it doesn't matter. Um, let's just get started, shall we? Okay, so as per the email, we're gonna start having these meetings regularly after races. We're gonna look back over the weekend and see if there are any key lessons we can learn so we can improve, move ourselves forward, and um, maybe next time we will get them. Uh, we will get them. So let's have a look. Um, let us start with the good, shall we? Uh, we don't want this meeting to be too Enzo for Rowney, do we? Uh -huh. um, Pole position for Charles, that is great. Um, you know, if we got more points to pole, we would have eight more points. So that's really good going there. Um, and they say pole is the best place to start a race from. So once we figure Sundays out, we will be laughing, won't we? Um, also in good news, our pace. Uh, starting with Charles, um, you know, we were a little bit worried, I must admit, we leaned hard into giving him that lot of downforce and uh, well my goodness was he fast in the fast corners i mean turn 11 here he was 15k faster than any other team um maybe maybe a little too fast um at some points but we will um we will get onto that um carlos tremendous work from him started 19th up to 9th in just 18 laps so excellent excellent stuff from him um, we really do think we could have had the Red Bulls bamboozled if we'd been able to do that long run on the hard tyres. Um, so who really knows where we would have ended up? Um, certainly, uh, maybe, possibly, uh, he'd have been able to challenge Max. Um, he, Max did pit very early, didn't he? He'd have been on very old hard tyres by the time Carlos would have stopped for medium. So maybe we've been able to get there and have the opportunity to outrace him later in the race. But we did have that early safety car, didn't we? So we ended up having to do something else, um, which not ideal, uh, but we will get onto that later. P5 though for Carlos, fastest lap, uh, not too shabby considering where we started. Um, but on that P19, not an ideal starting position, was it? Um, the girls and boys in data have uh, done some analysis and we do think we've pinpointed Carlos's French Grand Prix troubles to here, actually. Uh, way back in the Austrian Grand Prix. Um, as you can see from this image, the engine is a little bit too hot, turns out, hotter than we would have liked, at least. Um, note the fire here. And uh, this ended up having a knock-on effect and there were some penalties given out. So Carlos not able to start at the front as usual. Um, and we've gone back to the power unit team and we're looking at maybe making some engines that don't get so hot or at least don't explode. Um, so from what we understand, that might take a little bit of time. So people on the pit wall, uh, keep an eye on that, on, um, on the heat, the hotness of the engine. Because as you can see, it, it does have a knock-on effect and that is not great for our championship. So... Speaking of the championship, Charles is now 63 points behind Verstappen in the driver's title. And we have run the numbers on this. Um, not gonna lie, it's uh, not looking good. Now we can still win this if Charles wins every single race, completely in the bag, even if Max comes second. Um, unless Max <laughs> gets all the fastest laps, but you know what, let's not confuse ourselves at this point. You know, we're not great when we think about too many things at once. So let's just focus on winning. And that's what the strategists think we should do. Um, give all our attention to just winning all the races. Um, that's looking more and more like our best chance of success going forward. So if we focus on these 10 races here and just win them all, um, that's the goal. So write that down. Uh, in the constructors, 
uh, we are running into the risk of um, possibly being a little bit embarrassed by Mercedes if we're not careful, I'm afraid. They are 44 points behind us now, which is a lot closer than we are to Red Bull. And this is despite them being um, slow, um, whereas we are on the level with and often faster than Red Bull. So I'll understand if you find this a little bit confusing. Um, but again, we've crunched the numbers on this and we think Mercedes have achieved this by capitalizing on two key areas which we've kind of chosen not to focus on for this season. And, and they are consistency and reliability. What this means is Mercedes have been finishing races regularly. Uh, they've only had one retirement and they've also been finishing in the points, uh, often fairly solid points too. And uh, they've only missed the points twice, including that one retirement. Us, on the other hand, uh, we've missed the points seven times. Uh, and we really do believe that is costing us in the championship. Uh, speed, great. Race pace, quality pace, very, very good. No complaints. Um, actually scoring points though, that needs to be our focus going forward so that we're really adding to that championship tally. Uh, really does make the difference, guys. Okay, so points um, going forward would be great. Okay, so onto the actual race itself and let's start with Charles then. Uh, a few key points to cover here, but I think we can learn a lot from them. Uh, track limits, um, they've been a talking point for quite a few races now. And you know what, by and large, we did pretty well on that this weekend. Uh, there's just one particular moment I think worth going over and that happened at, at turn 12, um, which is here. Here we are, turn 12. Um, now, thanks to the rather zany color scheme at Paul Ricard, it's all pretty easy to understand where the track begins and ends. Uh, so this white line here is the edge of the track. Um, four wheels on the track, that's good. Two wheels on the track, that's fine. Uh, four wheels, that's, that's not allowed. Um, on lap 18, you'll see Charles really ventures actually quite far off the track. And this, I think, is what ended up costing us a good result here, if I'm honest. Um, not only would this have been a warning from the stewards, um, which you never want, uh, but we did end up stuck in the barrier and unable to continue. Um, there's always a risk when you exceed track limits. Um, the non-track bits aren't actually uh, designed for racing on, worth remembering. Um, so discuss this with your co-workers and drivers and really focus on them staying uh, on the track. Now it's not just track limits here that were the issue at this point. Um, I really want us to look into our lines here and our car control because I think we could pick out some uh, key errors, unfortunately. Um, so we were, you know, turn 11, pretty fast here, as I mentioned, the fastest, in fact, as I think I said earlier. Um, if we look at how Verstappen goes through this corner, he doesn't run quite as right as us, and he's a bit slower with his low downforce setup, but he does keep that car pointing in the direction of the racing line, just where he needs it to go. Um, now, if we compare this with Charles driving on lap 18, uh, we see the difference here, okay? There, you see? Just wind it back a little bit. There. Um, the car, pointing in a different direction to the way it's traveling. Uh, and uh, we believe this makes a lot of difference to how the car exits the corner and probably led to our crash and retirement. Um, we fed this back to Charles and he'll be looking to change his approach going forward. So hopefully this uh, will not happen again. We learn and improve, guys, every single race. Um, but let's do a little exercise. Let's imagine we didn't retire. Okay, let's envision a world in which we kept going right to the end. Would we have won the race? Well, let's think about where we were. First 16 laps, superb. We had lower top speed, but we used our cornering speed to keep Verstappen at bay and hold on to the lead. Now, a couple of us were worried before the race that Max would get by us on the long straight pretty easily, and he did have a crack at us, didn't he? But we held him back, and he did have to give up after a while, didn't he? Basically, he um, had to protect his tire. So strike one to us. But then, end of lap 16, what happened? He pitted, we stayed out. Max immediately used some fresh, hard tires to outpace us. So even if we had pitted straight away in reaction, we would have lost position on track anyway. So 
We originally thought Red Bull might be going for a two-stop. Lap 16, a little bit early for a one-stop, and Red Bull weren't the best at tyre conservation, so we thought maybe we would outpace them on pure strategy with a one-stop. But actually, as it turned out, they were pretty comfortable with a long second stint, so we would have had to be faster on track either way. So we did the right thing, guys, okay? We did the right thing. We stayed out. We didn't react immediately. We had to push on on those mediums for six, seven, eight laps. So we'd have nice fresh rubber and maybe use that difference in rubber to strike back at max uh, once again. It would have been tough, but maybe possible. Now we'll never know, of course, because of that crash, uh, but it could have happened. We will always have that possibility, if not reality. Now once again, once we lost Charles, that really swung our attention onto Carlos. And unfortunately, due to the aforementioned fiery engine issues that we had to deal with, Carlos started from the back. So he wasn't really in a position to immediately pick up the challenge for the win himself. Um, we really did just give Red Bull uh, an open goal there, which, you know, let's try not to do that again, okay? 63 points. 63 points. So what we wanted to do was give Carlos a long run on the alternate strategy. While everyone up front started on mediums and we run a shorter stint before going a long way on the hards, we decided to go long on hards right away, make up loads of places on the midfield and then switch to mediums for a fast dash to the end. Um, we would have been light, we would have been on soft rubber and had fresher tyres against the other drivers around us and we could have capitalised and I think a podium was easily, easily on the table. Unfortunately, that was not to be. When the safety car came out, we decided to go for that early switch to mediums, and that left us in a much weaker position. Um, as I mentioned, we thought Red Bull might be trying a two-stop with the Stappen, but they ended up happy to go all the way on just two sets of tires. So really looking back, um, we had three options for Carlos's race. One, don't stop under the safety car at all. Uh, grab some positions while the others pitted, and then push on and stick to the planned one stop we were aiming for from the beginning. Now, as it happened, we do not think this would have worked. As you can see here, when the safety car was pulled on lap 18 for Charles' crash, Hamilton, who was next on track, was 16 seconds ahead of Verstappen, who had already pitted. Now, as Hamilton went through the pits and Verstappen stayed out, we saw the net result, which was... Verstappen leading Hamilton by one second. So we can use that to estimate a 17 second pit loss time under that safety car. And we predict Carlos, who was 13 seconds behind Verstappen, if he didn't pit, would end up fifth in the queue behind Verstappen, Hamilton, Perez and Russell. This would have been really annoying um, as he probably would have just been stuck in that position until his pit stop. Um, so we had to try something a little bit different. Option two then. Um, if we do have to pit again for mediums, um, which we probably would have, do it nice and early so Carlos can use as many laps as possible to make up places in his final stint. Now, as we saw, Carlos was extremely fast on Sunday. He had that fresh engine, a great car under him, but he did need to take that second pit stop, and especially with that penalty, which we will get to, uh, that would have cost him about 32 seconds. So he needed to make all of that lost time up and more against the cars ahead of him. And for that, he needed time, which means giving him a nice long stint at the end on the mediums or the hards. Um, he was very happy on the mediums and he had a set left, so that would have been a great option. Um, but we did not go for this option. Option three then, um, don't pit him a second time at all. Uh, what we did notice during the race was Carlos was actually having a whale of a time on his mediums and they did seem to be holding together pretty well. Um, he did have a big blister on the front right, but he was fighting well into his stint, overtaking people left and right. Um, now we reckon there probably would have been a big drop off in pace towards the end of this stint and maybe even a risk of a puncture or a failure. So we decided not to go for that option either. So those are the three main options. Um, we went for the mystery fourth option which with the benefit of hindsight was uh, not the best of options available to us either. Uh, what we did uh, was we pitted him for his second stop very, very late, giving him not very much time at all to capitalize on his pace. Um, 
as I said, we did get fifth, which, yay, uh, well done, gang. Uh, should be proud, but also, boo, um, should have done better. Um, now, we have been monitoring other teams, and we have noticed uh, something they do uh, that we haven't yet brought into our arsenal. Um, they come prepared. When the race changes shape, they seem to have thought about it in advance. Um, they work as a team. Everyone seems to know what they're doing and how to do it. And they have authority and trust. The drivers believe that the team has the data and the know-how to dictate some kind of effective strategy. Okay. Um, what we did was this. We asked Carlos over the radio what he wanted to do. Uh, and he wanted to pit. Um, having asked his opinion, uh, we then told him he was wrong and to do the opposite, which, if you think about it, made the whole discussion kind of pointless, really. So bear that in mind in future. Um, Carlos, though, very gracious, just got his head down and uh, got to work with overtaking people. Uh, really good job there from him. Um, what we then did was change our minds uh, and told him to pit after all. Um, and not only is this a little bit confusing for him, uh, but we did give those contradictory instructions right in the middle of him fighting with other cars. So um, this was a mistake uh, on our part, we've now realized. We've identified the problem though, and we've... Um... Andrew, we've got the screens on order, right? The... Yeah, okay, so we've, we've actually ordered some extra monitors and they'll be ready for Hungary. So the guys on the pit wall, will now actually be able to see what's happening during the race and talk to the drivers at a more appropriate time. So there we go. We identified a problem, we implemented a solution, and we have become stronger again. Now, another little issue we made uh, for ourselves was this unsafe release. Um, it happens, pit stops are messy. We're just gonna keep practicing and make sure that doesn't happen again. Um, what was a little bit embarrassing though, um, we did tell Carlos he had a stop go penalty when he only had a five second time penalty. So um, Carlos then had to spend time correcting us instead of focusing on his race. Um, we have set up a course for the race engineers, a little bit of a refresher on the penalties, stop, go, drive through, uh, time penalties, the whole work. So we should be on top of it by Belgium, Sandvoort at the latest. So that's it, that's the most of it, guys. Um, it's never too late to learn better race practice, okay? Even after 72 years in the sport. Next time, you can be sure they won't see us coming, uh, and there'll be race wins from here all the way to Abu Dhabi, don't worry about that. Um, just focus on getting those big calls right, okay? Um, also the small calls and maybe start coming to some of the pre-race strategy briefings uh, once in a while. Just keep yourself fresh. You know, even if you've been working on strategy for quite a while, it's good to come prepared for the race, not necessarily figure things out on the fly. Okay? Okay. Good one, guys. Um, I'll see you back here after Hungary. Cheers. Do you love to watch or listen to lots of interesting homegrown content from a huge collection of independent creators? Then you will love Nebula. Nebula has gathered some of the best creators from all corners of the internet, people who love exploring, explaining, and unfolding the bits of the world they know best, and bringing it to you in all manner of interesting ways. If you really enjoy my post-race explainer videos, there is a whole section of explainer videos from exploring current headline events to some more niche topics you might not have thought about before. Hmm, maybe I should look at this one. And you're probably a well-rounded individual, aren't you? So you might also love music, movies, games, history. There is so much here to enjoy, all advert-free and uninterrupted. And on Nebula, many creators want to venture into topics or content or styles that they know YouTube would demonetize or just bury and cause them problems. So here on Nebula, you'll often find extended episodes or entirely original content that you won't find anywhere else, including Nebula original series and hefty productions. And Nebula is such a good platform for edutainment that CuriosityStream have partnered with them to bring you an amazing double deal. CuriosityStream is the place to go for the best full-fat documentaries and non-fiction shows and films covering all stretches of knowledge in varied and interesting ways. There really is something for everyone here, including the fascinating and frankly adorable China's Last Little Train, about the very last narrow steam gauge railway in China surviving among China's tremendous development over the last few decades. Wonderful. 
And if you want access to all of CuriosityStream and all of Nebula, then it's very simple and incredible value. Just sign up to CuriosityStream and you'll get access to Nebula for free as long as you're a CuriosityStream member. That is it. And if you use the link in the description, curiositystream.com slash chainbear, you will get 26% off the annual plan, which means you will get both platforms for the whole year for just $14.79. And that will help indie creators like me keep on creating. Everyone's a winner.